He says, I was really surprised when the uh, when the answers given since they see with the answers given since they seem to miss the real underlying core issue at stake. So please let me explain while there are uh, while there may be covenant dynamics and ramifications at stake. The core underlying issue is the nature of God as he has revealed himself within the scriptures. I love this. This is absolutely 100 percent the case. Uh, Gary has hit the nail on the head, and thank you for that, sir. He goes on. Obviously, he is personal and relational, and I realize this is all elementary for you all. The covenant itself defined the boundaries of the relationship and revealed to us how he intends to deal with sin. Yet, it doesn't really answer the question of why sin has to be dealt with in such a severe manner. I don't think this can be stressed enough to those who inquire, even if it were from a pure secular humanistic worldview, such as how can two wrongs in the sense of another innocent victim dying make a right. The most dominant characteristic of Hashem, that is God, uh, God's uh, of God we encounter is the in the scriptures is his holiness. It is his holiness that demands justice. Um, I, I end quote there um, because I think that's enough to grasp the overall message of what Gary is saying. It is a, he has hit the nail on the head. I can't say, I, I can't stress that enough. He's absolutely right. The gospel message is about God's holiness. And this plays into so many different aspects of our theology. This is one of the reasons that I believe in an eternal punishment of the wicked. So, so many within the um, uh, the Messianic movement and the Hebrew Roots movement and the Torah movement in general <clears throat> are giving up on some core doctrines of the faith. And one of those core doctrines that I see, this isn't an over, overwhelming amount, but some of those core doctrines that I see being given up on are is eternal punishment of the wicked. Why is in eternal punishment of the wicked tied into the gospel message itself? Well, it's because God is infinitely holy, as Gary has pointed out. And we as human beings have changed our nature to be unholy. In in other words, it's not that I incur sin. It's that my nature now is sin. The being that I am is uh, at its core sinful. And God cannot, as an infinite God in his holiness and everything else, but in his holiness, his holiness cannot uh, be in relationship with something that is unholy. That would make his holiness not infinite. That can't be. And so you need something to pay that price of unholiness in order to come back into relationship with the Almighty God. And, I mean, this plays into the Messiah's deity as well. Yeshua has to be God because he can't have a beginning. If he has a beginning, then it can't pay the infinite transgression against an infinite holiness. And this is why Eternal punishment of the wicked comes into play because to pay that price, if you have one sin in your life, it is a infinite mark against infinite holiness. And to pay that price, you need an infinite payment. So you have two options. A, you have a payment that is infinite in both directions, or you pay for that penalty for infinity. Hence, eternal punishment of the wicked. Okay, I've laid out my understanding of uh, what Gary has so rightfully put forward. Rob, you want to jump in? I don't know. I don't have anything to add to any of that. I liked Gary's email. I think he did a really good job describing it. I remember the original question that that kicked off this whole discussion was why why did Christ have to die for Adam's sin? I think that was the question. And the idea was, was there any other way? Right. And so we unpacked that from a few different angles. One is that um, you, you, can, you can frame it that the Messiah died for Adam's sin, but really he, he died for the elect. He purchased, you know, with his, with his precious blood, as it says in 1 Peter, um, as a spotless lamb. He purchased uh, the souls of the elect. You know, right. we were de- dead in our trespasses and sins, and and like you were just saying, that's 
and even in Isaiah, as it says, your sins have separated you from God. Like there's, there's um, death and darkness, which is contrary to light and life and holiness. And, you know, he is the living God. He is, like Gary pointed out, you know, in Isaiah 6, the seraphim say, kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. I mean, that's, they're just declaring his holiness. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button and check out more videos from Messiah Matters. Messiah Matters.